Hello and welcome back. This is Jesus the Conqueror, a devotional series designed to build hope and faith. Uh, my name is Roger Schmidt, and um, I hope you subscribe, and I hope you share these videos with, uh, with someone else. Um, our theme text is Revelation 6-2, a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Uh, I want to tell you about how I learned to swim as a young man, as a kid. Uh, when, when I was about in the fourth grade or so, uh, my parents moved the family from mid-Ohio, this was the late 70s, down to central Florida, down to, our, to uh, the Orlando area. Uh, my dad had taken a teaching job down there, and we were going to be living close to, to his uh, side of the family, where I had lots of cousins and aunts and uncles, and it was going to be great. So we are moving down there. The problem was uh, I didn't know how to swim, and I'm moving down to Florida, where everyone knows how to swim. You know, uh, water sports is a big deal, of course, as you would expect down in Florida. And uh, we were staying uh, temporarily in a campground when we moved down there. While my parents were looking for a house to buy, we were living in my mom and dad's pop-up trailer, camper trailer that we used for all kinds of camping. But we were living in this thing for a few weeks while they went out hunting for houses. Well, uh, this was during the summer, so we were off from school and they had time to, to do this. So while they were off during the day with a realtor looking for houses, we would stay in the campground there and spend time swimming. Now, my brothers were swimming. I was wading, okay? I mean, I could kind of swim a little underwater, but I couldn't swim on the surface. I'd never been taught. I'd never had lessons. And I, don't, I was, you know, stuck in the shallow end while my, my, while my brothers, that is, um, were able to jump off the diving board, go on the slide. And so I felt a little isolated. But what made it worse was when all the cousins came and spent the day there too. And they all knew how to swim. They were great swimmers. They could all water ski and swim. And, and here I am, the one, the one guy who can't swim. It was embarrassing. So I decided to do something about it. It was time to learn how to swim. I told myself, if I'm going to live down here, this is ridiculous. I got to be able to swim. So um, I chose a method that I do not recommend to you or anybody else. But this was my method to learn how to swim. I decided that when no one was looking, I was just going to jump in and see what happens, okay? Uh, this is a true story. This is exactly what I tried to do. And um, very dangerous method, right? Um, it didn't occur to me what would happen if I couldn't swim. But anyway, I thought I could do it. Um, I knew I could swim underwater because I could do that on the shallow end. I just didn't know how to swim at the surface. So um, I, I waited. I looked around until no one was looking. No one, not even people I didn't know. I waited until no one was looking. And um, I threw myself out into the deep end from the side as far as I could. And, um, well, I came up to the surface, and it was, it, was, uh, it was something to behold, I'm sure. I was in full panic, okay? I totally panicked. I started to thrash and sputter. And, um, you know, I became suddenly a drowning victim, okay? And there was no lifeguard on duty, by the way. This was swim at your own risk kind of stuff. And uh, I, I did eventually make it back to the side. I'm sitting here talking to you, so I must have made it, but it was not pretty, and it was, it was near death, I think. But here's why I'm telling you this story. If somebody had come by, swam, swam out to me, or, or, or jumped in to, to get me at that moment when I was in full panic, I would have grabbed on to that person like grim death, okay? And um, in fact, I've been told that this is something that lifeguards – need to be careful of. My, my oldest son, my, my only son, my, my oldest child is a uh, lifeguard, and um, he, he talks about this. You have to be careful not to uh, get drowned in the process of saving somebody, right? The drowning victim needs to surrender to the lifeguard. Now, I want to talk about that concept for a moment, this idea of surrendering to um, our rescuer. We're talking about how Jesus lends his strength. And today I want to talk about how we need strength to surrender. Uh, in Luke 24, Jesus revealed his plan to give strength to his disciples. We talked about this in the last video. If you haven't seen it, you should go back and, and listen. But 
in Luke 24, he's, uh, he, he kind of reviewed his mission and he talked about what their role was going to be. They were going to be his witnesses. And he told them that he was going to send the promise of the father to them. He told them that they were to wait to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. So Jesus was promising them power, and he was telling them that they would need this power. But they needed to wait for it. Okay, they're going to be his witnesses, but first they needed to be filled with power. And that, of course, is the power of the Holy Spirit, the greatest and most misunderstood gift that Jesus has given us. Now, before they could do anything for Christ or anyone else, they needed to surrender their lives to the Holy Spirit. Now, it's the same with our spiritual life. Okay, we're far more stubborn than we think, and we need to surrender that stubbornness. We need to surrender our lives, ourselves, um, to Jesus. And, but that's hard to do because, again, we're so stubborn. Um, we're so prideful. It requires strength that we simply don't have. Now, when Jesus was talking to his disciples about going and waiting to be filled with power, he said that in a very matter-of-fact way there at the end of the gospel. But it's because he, would, he had already taken time to teach them earlier in far more detail. Okay? He, he told them all about the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he said uh, to the disciples in the upper room. Now, this was where they were celebrating the Passover together before Jesus went on trial, just before Jesus' crucifixion, etc. And he was teaching them the things that they needed to know. He knew what hard times were coming, and so he was preparing them. And this is what he said about the Holy Spirit. This is in John 16, in verse 7 and 8. He said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. Now, he'd been telling them that they weren't going to see him anymore. He was trying to prepare them for him going back to his father. And so he says here, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Now, that's the Holy Spirit he's talking about here. And then he goes on to say, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. And he goes on to, to continue to, to talk about this, you know, this promise. You see, Jesus, you know, he's describing it as an advantage because he knows how much we need this, right? Um, we need what the Holy Spirit brings. And we need to recognize that the Holy Spirit has two primary ministries on earth. Let me say it more personally. The Holy Spirit has two ministries that he brings to you and to me, okay? His first ministry is to us, okay? And then his second ministry, ultimately what he wants is to minister through us, right? He wants to be a blessing to other people in our lives, through our lives, right? But first, before we can be of any value or any good to anyone else, we need to first surrender our lives to Jesus. So that's his first commitment to us. The Holy Spirit's first ministry is to us, to influence us and lead us to Jesus. And he does this through a, a very, uh, very clear sequence, okay? And it's very common sense, right? First, we come under his influence. Okay? And, and, and that happens from the time we're born. We're under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He's, he's leading us gently to Jesus. He brings us into contact with people who share, who share Jesus or um, through impressions, through, through circumstances. We're under his influence all the time. He, uh, you're under his influence right now as you watch this video. Okay? We are always under his influence. And then as, as we experience that, that influence, that, um, that, that direction, that guidance in our life, we come under conviction. In other words, we come to believe the things that the Holy Spirit is revealing about Jesus. Okay, we call that conviction. And once we come under conviction, we believe what we're being shown, then we're ready to come under his authority, under the authority of Jesus. We surrender our lives to him. We allow him to have leadership 
okay? Another way you might think of this, um, we come under his jurisdiction, under his governance. Uh, our military person might say we come under his command, right? Either way, we allow him to lead. We, we surrender our lives to him. And the sequence is very important. And this is by way of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is, um, this is the strength that Jesus has provided for us, has lent to us so that we can surrender to him. We don't have the strength on our own. On our own, we're selfish. On our own, we don't want to surrender to anybody. But gently, through the Holy Spirit, we, uh, through his influence, we come under conviction that we need it. We recognize how lost we are. We recognize the benefits of Jesus. We recognize the value in surrendering. And when we come under that conviction, then we're ready to surrender. Paul um, summarized the process in, in Ephesians. Well, in several places, really, but I'm going to look at Ephesians. I love the way this is worded in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. It says, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me read that again and, 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 and flag a few things. He said, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, okay, when you heard, that's the influence. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, that hearing the word, that's the Holy Spirit influencing us, bringing us into contact with eternal life bringing us into contact with Jesus and his truth, okay? So he goes on, when you heard the word of truth and believed in him, all right, that's talking about conviction. We hear it, the influence of the Holy Spirit, we hear these things, we become convicted of it, we become believers of it. And then Paul finishes by saying, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. That sealing, that is coming under the authority of Christ. That is becoming a sealed, a citizen of heaven, right? You become a child of God. You, uh, he goes on to talk about we uh, share in the inheritance, right? So we, we are under his governance, under his leadership. He becomes our Lord. And I love the fact that the sequence is very clear. But it's also, it's very gentle. He doesn't force us to, to surrender like in a military sense, no. He guides us to see the value in surrendering, recognizing that, that the alternative is eternal death, which, and he doesn't want that. So he, he influences us to see the value of accepting Jesus and surrendering our lives to him. That this gentleness is like a friend. And that's why Jesus uh, said, it's to your advantage that I go. That way I can send the helper. He's here to help us. Now, I told you how I learned to swim. Now I'm gonna put learned there in quotes because I really didn't learn to swim. I learned to survive. I learned to not drown, okay? Um, later, it was actually the next summer, I think, um, my parents sent me to summer camp. And uh, when we got to the camp, the first day, all the campers needed to demonstrate their swimming skills. You needed to be a strong swimmer before they would let you swim. Um, you know, if you, if you didn't pass the swim test, you um, first had to take swimming lessons before you could freely swim with the rest of the campers. So it's kind of a big deal. You wanted to do well at the swim test to demonstrate you were a strong swimmer. And uh, what they did is they lined, uh, they lined everybody up on one side of this dock and you had to jump in, swim to the other side and demonstrate that you were a strong swimmer. If you were a strong swimmer, you would get this bracelet with a certain color that told the lifeguards free to swim, no problem. Uh, but if you were not a strong swimmer, you'd get a different colored wristband and you would have to take swim lessons. Okay. Now I was pretty confident. I knew how to swim, right? I'd, I'd done this before. They lined us all up, but here's what I did not factor in. Well, let me back up a step. I was at a camp called Camp Kulakwa down in central Florida. <clears throat> the Kulakwa stands for cool water. Okay, this camp was built around this beautiful natural spring, beautiful setting, right? But the water was really cold. The spring water, I don't remember how cold it was, but cold enough to um, when you jumped in and you were, especially if you weren't expecting it, it could take your breath away. It was really cold and you kind of, your muscles kind of seize up and I wasn't expecting that. I'd never been in water that cold before. You know, I'd been in the ocean, I'd been in pools and whatever, but I'd never been in spring water like this. 
and and even though I knew in my mind it was going to be cold, I wasn't ready for what it would do to my body. So they lined us up there, and when they said go, I jumped in there, and boy, took my breath away. And I was, it was almost like I was back in that pool for the first time, learning how to swim all over again. I kind of panicked. Now, I got myself, to, I'm, you know, I, I didn't, they didn't need to rescue me. I got, got myself going, and I eventually got over to the side, but I got the color wristband that meant I had to take swim lessons and I was embarrassed but here's the deal it was to my advantage to get that help all right I came under the authority of a, of a you know a, um, a trained swim instructor and that and that swim instructor gently helped me become a strong swimmer that week I left that camp um, a, a, a different swimmer I had actual swim skills, right? I, I knew how to swim. And it opened up a whole world of water sports to me that I've enjoyed the rest of my life. I'm a, I'm a water skier. I'm a scuba diver. I, I'm a kayaker. I, I love water sports. I've been around water my whole life ever since. And I love it. I'm a strong swimmer. Okay, but I first had to overcome my pride and surrender to a helper. And this is what Jesus offers you. Okay, ask God to give you the strength to surrender to Jesus because it's, it's to your advantage. And, and you know this to be true. The Holy Spirit is influencing you even now that this is the right move, that this is the wise course in your life. All right, you, you're under conviction. That's the Holy Spirit in your life bringing you to, to recognize your need of Jesus. I recognize it. Why not allow Jesus' strength to come into your life, surrender to him, and praise God for his son Jesus.